Then we have gardening in full swing. Um, I, I experiment with all different kinds of seeds, all different companies. I try to figure out if there's a difference between, you know, the two for one or the four dollar seeds. Um, some nasturtium seeds. They're kind of like a pea plant, beautiful red flowers. And um, I test, you know, I look at non-GMO, I look at vintage varieties, and to tell you the truth, I really think it all comes down to fertilizer, the good fertilizer that you use. Um, but I really, this, this catalog right here, this is, a, this is just a Gurney's catalog that came um, I'm always looking for good ideas, something new that I might want to plant. Um, I planted this years ago, the Blue Moon Wisteria, and I'll have to show you outside um, how it's growing. It is, it's absolutely beautiful. It took about at least seven years before we could get some blooms on it, but now um, it's beautiful and it smells beautiful. So, I'm excited to see what kind of success I have this year. It's been a very cold, very cold year so far in, you know, it's, it's the end of April and it's still pretty cold. Because of this, we had a disaster. I'm going to show you what it is. This is pretty heartbreaking, but this is a 2022 Queen Bee. This queen, I found it dead in the hive. I don't know if they didn't accept her. Um, it was a new box of bees. It'd be very unusual for a box of bees to not accept a queen if there was no queen. And I'm wondering if there was already a queen in with the bees. And that's why um, they killed her or if it just got too cold and she didn't get the support she needed and she got too cold or wet and died. But there she is and but yeah, there she is and it's heartbreaking. You see her, she has her 2022 yellow dot every year. The bees have a different color dot in their back. Um, old beekeepers say that you can make a good bee bee hive bait with um, if you crush the queen in some alcohol and it will you'll have a long-lasting pheromone that you can spray in a hive and you might luck out and get some a swarm of bees go to that hive so I might try that maybe not all is lost we'll see seems a little gruesome but you know this is life when you're dealing with live creatures um, and I wanted to show you, so one of the weaker hives that we had uh, died, and the only benefit of that, as heartbreaking as it is, is I don't feel guilty reclaiming the honey. Usually I'll feed it to a new hive, but I wanted to show you, just look at, look at this beautiful honey and look at the wax comb. I mean, this is natural comb if you leave the hive open. You don't use the uh, frames with the built-in hive. They'll create their own. They'll create their own comb, and you can see it's superior. It's bigger. You can put. It has more honey in it, and it's really just beautiful. But anyway, so I just thought I'd show you this. And of course, this is honey from different different times of the season. We have we have the really light honey down at the bottom, and then we get some of the older end of the summer honey. Other benefits, um, other benefits um, of having bees is you can all, there's different varieties of honey for different times, different seasons. So it's kind of a comparison. And 
um, and then this is this is not my one of mine, but this is a spreadable honey, which is more of a creamed honey. So it's very it's thick and um, it's delicious. And this is what they would use to make like you know the um, it's, it's very thick. So and then also a great health supplement is bee pollen. So I just thought I'd show you that. So this is just some rendered wax. Um, you know, this is again benefit when you do have a beehive die out. Um, you can render the wax and you can use it for all sorts of things. I usually just melt it down, put it back on frames and stick it back in the hive. Um, also, I love these bags. I don't know if anybody uses these recyclable plastic bags. They're great. But anyway, so I just wanted to show you what the wax looks like when it, it's melted down. Um, so there it is. It could, be, it could be used for candles or salves or, or lotions or things like that. So people who know me know that I'm a journaler. And so this is the start of my journal to just keep track of um, this year's beehive season. Um, we had a mixed bag of, of success over the winter. Sometimes bees just do what they want. They've totally eaten a hole through here, and that's how they're coming in and out of the hive. They seem happy though. I just wanted to recommend a nice accompaniment with any sort of tea. I have these two boxes of cookies. La Mer Poulade, butter, and citron, which is, of course, lemon. Um, so anyway, I got these at Job Lot, which I was surprised. I was like, oh, I'll give them a try, but they're really, really good. So I just wanted to show you these. Really nice packaging and delicious. And on the back, it has a little story in French and English, so... I don't know, I thought they were interesting, and like I said, they're really good, so. And this is how they come, packaged in little fours, and there's two of these four packages in the box, and I just took a bite, and again, so good and perfect with tea. I'm a big fan of gummy bears, and I just wanted to show you this is the 100th anniversary of the Haribo gummy bears, which are my favorite. Um, so, if you get them, you'll notice that it's 100th anniversary and they come with a special special new gummy bear so I just had to show you that little party hat I thought that was such a cute idea 